What's up guys, Jenny here and back again for another video and today, and today we're going to be taking a look at the BitBoy. The BitBoy, which is a Game Boy locking clone device, yet plays NES slash Famicom games with this particular device having 300 NES, Famicom or whatever you want to call it, Japanese or Western version, um, games loaded in. Now we're going to be taking a look at those games, I'm going to be showing you exactly how they play, obviously not all of them, but you guys will get to kind of listen out for kind of what the sound is, I, if the sound quality is any good. I'm uh, going to be taking a look at obviously the screen and how crisp it is. It is backlit. It is. I'm going to read off the box right here. Um, it is a 2.2 inch IPS screen. This thing comes with the charging cable, which is a USB jack on the bottom here, and an AV cable so you guys can run this through your TV should you wish to, wish to play it on a TV. Me personally, I feel that it is what it is. I prefer to play it handheld rather than on a screen uh, but nonetheless some of you out there may wish to play it that way so they come with that ca the, the cables built in um again this is a sponsored video they sent me this in order to review but i will link their website in the description if you guys want to take a further look at getting your hands on a bit boy i have a lot to say there are a lot of disadvantages to this but there are advantages as well so i'm dying to tell you what my thoughts are in the end so make sure you guys stick around to the end we're going to come back and draw some conclusions but this is how it looks guys Next to an original Game Boy, you guys can see that it is making the shape pretty darn well, front, back and side, um, but it's, it is significantly smaller, but don't let that put you off because it does sit quite ergonomically, it does sit quite nicely when you're playing, um, the ergonomics aren't actually bad on this. But I will say, cheeky little cheekiness here, there is an SD card slot on the top right here. But it does nothing. If you put a micro SD card slot in this, you're going to lose your SD card unless you unscrew it to pull it back out again. This is a dummy slot. I have no idea why they've done that. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, they're lithium batteries and like I said, you can charge it with a USB cable. You cannot take this off. You cannot, I can, or at least I cannot take the battery back off, which is again, a little bit odd. It seems like there's some redundant features on the shell, but again, will will i don't know if that even is, is a thing for you um we got the four buttons here um i find that they have the same functions they don't really add any value to have four um kind of trigger keys the d-pad itself can be a little bit stiff um the paint job isn't too bad in terms of the finish on here um but it's not the best so a little bit about the aesthetics there dummy sd card slot mimics the game boy shape absolutely perfectly it's obviously a lot smaller let's take a look at the games guys and then we will come back and draw them conclusions Okay, so let's turn this thing on. So we've got the volume rocker on the side here. Guys, I'm just going to turn it down just so it doesn't kind of drown out what I'm saying. Um, I will turn it back up so you get a kind of flavour for the types of kind of sound quality um, in some of the games. But straight off the bat, you guys can see that the volume is really, 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 really decent. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the volume and the screen looks absolutely awesome. Um, very crisp, really well backlit. Um, and I will see, say that there are some of these models kicking about with 129 games in. Um, obviously, this is better because it's got 300 in. Um, I've played quite a few of these games, which we'll get again, we're going to take a look at. Some of them you'll be completely familiar with, like Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers 3, which do play pretty much like the NES version. There are some minor colour differences, but nonetheless, it plays and sounds pretty much as you would expect it to play on the NES. Now, I will show you some gameplay, but we're just going to cycle through the entire list first. Then we're going to dive into some gameplay, and I want you guys to let me know your comments, your thoughts in the section below. Um, now, you guys can see we've got kind of Contra down here, some really decent kind of Contra games. Um, but you can cycle up and down, or you can simply press left or right just to cycle through the pages without scrolling through every single game. Um, if you see anything you guys want to kind of take a further look at, don't forget to kind of pause it. Um, some of these things you would have never even heard of. This actually plays really well, Robocop 4, which we'll probably take a look at. Some Tiny Toons games, really enjoyed Tiny Toons Buster Bunny Bust Loose on the Super NES back in the day. Um, and Turtles 1, this actually says, it says on the box, like I showed you guys in the introduction, that everything is in English. If we just go ahead and actually open this, I'll show you guys. That is not English. That is not English, guys. Um, 
As you guys can see, we'll just, I said I'd, I'd kind of take a look at games later on, but we'll take a look now. It's really, really difficult to play um, with the camera in my view, but nonetheless, guys, it shows you just what you can expect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume up as well. Uh, just turn that right up here. And then to kind of get out of the game, all you do is you press the reset button here and it will take you back to the menu. Just turn it down again. But bear in mind, it will take you all the way back to page one. So if you weren't on page one, you need to bear that in mind, guys. You may have to do a little bit of kind of memorizing where exactly you were. So we'll flick back. I think we were on like, yeah, here we go, page, uh, whatever page that is. Um, so yeah, we just tried out Turtles 1 for quite a few games. Um, this to me, Womp. E M Wampum? Wampum is that? No idea. But again, we'll just cycle through. Um, Street Fighter 5, really. Again, some of these games are really, really tacky. We'll take a look at that in a minute. So remember number 58. So I'm gonna come back to 58. Mortal Kombat Power Rangers 2. Let's take a look. Uh, I think this is kind of crazy. This looks nothing like Mortal Kombat. Let's take a look at Final Fan uh, sorry, Street Final Fantasy. Street Fighter 5, because we know this is not going to be Street Fighter 5. This is a complete, complete rip-off. Let's be... Where's Chun-Li? There she is. Okay. Alright, let's see what we got here, guys. Just gives you guys, again, an idea. Oh my god, it, I haven't actually played this. It looks like Kung Fu on the Atari. An arcade. Again, it's super difficult to play. But again, guys, you can see that it is nothing like what you would expect um, from Street F Street Fighter game. It's kind of weird. Um, Angry Bird 2. Again, this is like a little side-scrolling adventure game. Um, obviously cashing in on the Angry Birds franchise like so bad. It is nothing like the Angry Birds you would expect to find, like on mobile devices. Um, Darkwing Duck. I don't know if that's the original. Um, Tetris 2. We got some F1, some Chinese chess. We got Chinese chess, guys. So as what you know, I think I think that what this does really well in terms of its game libraries, it does give some really kind of decent games, good franchises like Mario, um, Mighty Bomb Jack, oh my goodness, um, Ice Climber on the NES is a classic as well, um, but it does give some incredibly crappy, tacky, awful games, um, I think there's a Harry Potter game on here as well, we look at this, we've got Pikachu, let's check this out, this is crazy, Pikachu guys, not Pokemon, no this is not a Pokemon game, this is just called Pikachu. Pikachu. I've played this and it is awful. I don't know what it's doing right now. So again, you can see this is like live. I'm pushing start. Okay. Took a minute there to actually get this thing to work. Hi, I'm Shirley, the loon. I'm a fortune teller. Okay, Shirley. Shirley exists in Pikachu's world. What the hell is this? What? Okay, guys, so you can see it's kind of some random little side-scroller, kind of Super Mario Brothers mechanics. It is nothing like... Okay. You guys get the idea. You guys get the idea. I would prefer... I don't even think there are, like, any save states, which is a bit of a downside. Uh, but nonetheless... Just take another look. It's not bad. Dig Dog. Oh my goodness. If you guys have been watching Stranger Things 2, Dig Dog. Dig Dog, baby. Let's see if we can beat Mad Max's score, shall we? Let's have a go on Dig Dog. Oh my goodness. Let's do this. Oh, I'm going to get wasted already. Ah! We definitely don't beat Mad Max's score. But things like that, you know, the familiar games, the arcade stuff, runs reasonably well. Um, not experienced many crashes, but I will show you. Um, there is a game, it's literally called Harry Potter. Burger Time, I've been playing this. 
Oh, let's see if we can find it. It does not work. So bear in mind, some of these games do not work. All right, guys, we have found Harry Potter. Check this out. Bear in mind, like I said, a lot of these, some of them don't work. Like this. This is all you get when you try and open Harry Potter. With the most hideous music in the world. Um, so there we go. We've had a little cycle through. There's nothing overly kind of complex about this. Like I said, simple left and right to cycle the menus quicker or up and down if you want to get a little screen grab of each game um, and just kind of keep your eye on that random Chippendale thing there, whatever that is. Um, but yeah, there we go, guys. Uh, we're going to draw some conclusions. I've got quite a bit to say about this, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys this in fully kind of live, working, functional order. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And if I don't know the answer, I'll endeavour to try and find out for you. So let's draw some conclusions. So there we go. Um, I, 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 I would go as far to say those games are not licensed to be on here. Um, so yes, it can be arguably a little bit cheeky if you're not a fan of emulation, then this video unfortunately is not going to be for you. Um, this is priced at $39.99. I don't think it is worth $39.99. I would not pay $40 for this at all. Um, like I said, a lot of the ROMs are cheap, um, the rip-off kind of stuff, um, and the, the games that are on there that are decent are pretty easy to come by if you want to play it on regular hardware, or if you're lucky enough to have an NES Mini, then you obviously have that as an option as well. But it is a buyer's market, and if you want this device, um, then and you want to pay $40, then I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. It just depends on what you want out of it. I don't think it's worth $40. You might think it's worth $40, but let me know in the comment section below what you think this should be priced at if you don't think it's worth $39.99. So there we go guys, again, first link in the description if you want to check out more information about BitBoy, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe and come back when is this video going out? This video should be going out Wednesday, so there was a video on Monday, come back on Friday for another video and I will hopefully see you on stream as well. So there we go guys, the BitBoy, let me know what you think, thank you for watching, my name's Gemma, have a beautiful day, what is that noise? Take care, see you soon.